Hey guys, welcome back to the channel Daughter of Increase. My name is Nate Denise. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happened to stumble across this video, and I post new videos every Tuesday and Thursday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. As the title says above, we are finally diving into my testimony series, and I'm not sure how many videos this is going to be. I am going to be going through basically majority of my testimonies i have quite a few um to share with you guys some will be emotional i might cry in some of these videos i'm hoping i don't but um i just feel like god is telling me to share my testimony and he has been telling me to share for the longest and i noticed that i don't find it hard to share my testimony with people especially strangers i find it a lot more hard to do so with people that know me um, because, you know, obviously when you go through things in life, people automatically assume that, you know, you're either lying or you didn't go through what you went through. But, um, I've been through quite a lot. Um, and to name a few, I have been through rape before. I have been through molestation. I have been through an abortion. I've been through and have been dealing with sexual sin. And I talked about that in one of my update videos. Um, you know, depression is definitely a major one for me. That I've been dealing with for like forever <laughs> just about um, I have testimonies from like college and my high school days my parents were divorced um, are divorced sorry so I like went through a lot of things with that and um, with this series I really just want to share parts of me with you guys and be as real as I can um, and transparent it will be hard you might hear me stumble a little bit in these videos just because some of these things I'm not a hundred percent over um but i know that sharing my testimony will heal me as well as help others and you know the bible says that we are to confess our sins to one another to heal and all of that great stuff so i figured doing this would work um so yeah this is a quick overview and that's pretty much it i'm not sure how long these videos are going to be i i could i'm not even going to sit here and give you a time frame because some videos might be 30 minutes some might be 15 i i really don't know but um this is a series that's going to be really heartfelt really tough um and really personal and i'm going to start off this video outside of this overview obviously with um i guess with my testimony on depression because that's one that I still kind of slip into every now and then so um, a lot of my testimonies do kind of coincide with each other so I'm not gonna go into depth on certain parts with my testimonies um, because with me being depressed it started at a really young age um, a really young age due to I guess molestation if you will and I'm going to talk about that in a separate video but um we're going to talk about depression today. Um, and I'm sipping on some tea. You guys know my favorite tea is these pumpkin spice, hearty spice tea. This literally has become one of my new favorite teas. Like, It's amazing. But um, depression. Now, for those of you who don't know, I am 27 years old. I know I look like a baby. I look like a baby. I look 12, but I'm not. I'm 27 years old. Um... And I have been depressed probably for 24 years, 24, 24 years. It wasn't until maybe two or three years ago that I got completely uh, out of depression, if that makes sense. Um, thanks to my amazing bishop and first lady, I they have been through so much with me and have prayed for me my mother has prayed for me so like all the people who've prayed for me really have helped me but um yeah it's been just about 24 23 years that i've been depressed like serious deep depression and i never went to a doctor to get diagnosed um but i knew that i was depressed because i just it wasn't good um it really wasn't good i was having suicidal thoughts um, I just didn't like to be around people. I didn't like to be in a space of people, even around family members. I would just be really quiet and awkward. Um, you know, it, it wasn't good. And the depression built up over time with everything that went on. Um, like I said, I was raped. I was molested. 
Um, I went through an abortion. High school was, you know, up and down. Then I was a little sexual sin. And then my parents got divorced. And then I went to college. And college wasn't working out. And the things that I wanted didn't happen the way they were supposed to happen. So, you know, all of that built up. And every time I thought I could get out of depression, something would happen to force me back into that depression. And I would go deeper into that depression. So, um, some background. As a kid, I was always quiet. Um, I was a quiet kid. It was nothing really, like, wrong it just I was a very quiet person that's just who I was um there were times my mother said when I was a baby she would have me on her hip and she wouldn't even realize I was on her hip because I wouldn't cry I wouldn't whine nothing um I've had relatives even say that I was like always a quiet kid so being quiet isn't really um a difficult not difficult um, what's the word it wasn't something that you would notice because I was always quiet so being quiet was just you know who I was what I was but um this was around the time of whenever R. Kelly did the whole peeing situation on the girl because that's literally how I can remember um that's when the depression really started to kick in for me that was probably Oh, I don't even know. Not even, probably before then. I'm going to say around 4th grade, 4th, 5th grade is when depression really started to kick in for me. Um, just because family issues were going on and I just, I didn't want to be around certain family members. But I didn't really have a choice but to be around certain family members. So it kind of put a damper on me and um, when something took place, I was told to never say anything. So having to do with that as a kid you're like okay this feels wrong it sounds wrong but they told me not to say nothing and because you love that relative you don't say anything not knowing that um you probably should have said something so that started to make me be quiet um a lot and then when you get into high school i mean when i got into elementary middle school i guess you can say um things got quite interesting because you know you're around kids who are having sex um, you're around kids who basically are used to doing whatever they want to do. So I was trying to always be, you know, cool enough to be down with people. Um, I was never the cool kid. I was never the nerd. I was, like, cool with everyone. I knew everyone. I was friends with mostly everyone. I didn't have a problem with many people. I mean, I, I just, I didn't. I was cool. Like, my school was a very small school, and um, I was the third graduating class from my school. And... Basically, when you went to that school, you was in that school from 5th to 12th grade. So, I basically grew up with everyone <laughs> there. But, you know, as people get older, things take place. And then, you know, when puberty hit, I got my first period, I think, at 9. Um, but it stopped. Like, it came once, and then it just stopped and didn't come back till I was 13. So, I was dealing with a lot of body issues on that because I was very much a stick figure. When I say a stick figure, you guys, I was like my pinky, like just straight up and down and as a kid you know shopping just sucked for me like it literally sucked and when I got to high school it sucked even more but let me go back to middle school so it was about eighth grade eighth or freshman year of high school um, I joined debate team and there was a guy in my, in my school that um, I liked I mean there was a lot of guys in my school that I liked we all went to the same school for so many years but one in particular, um, we didn't have a relationship per se, but we had relations, if you get what I'm saying. And um, I'll never forget when we went to a debate competition. I believe it was in Brooklyn. Um, Brooklyn in my head, and I can't remember. But we went to a debate competition, and our judge wasn't there yet. So I had went to the bathroom. And then I heard the bathroom door open, but I kind of knew, like, I had a feeling of who it was coming into the bathroom because everyone else was already doing their debates. So I was dealing with that situation, and um, basically I was raped during the debate team competition, and I'll talk about that in my rape molestation testimony. But um, I was dealing with that because it was, a, I was struggling with a lot because that happened, but I really liked the guy. But the guy was no good. Like, literally, he was a good for nothing. Um, and his goal was to bang everyone in that school. Literally. That, like, I overheard him say that that was his goal. And, um, you know, I... Excuse me. Okay, sorry, guys. I had to sneeze. But, um, yeah. So, I dealt with that. Um, and then, 
the way the story was presented to people, it made me look like not a whore. I don't want to say whore because that's not the word. But it made me look like I was the one chasing after him when that really wasn't the case. But, um, you know, it is what it is. So, you know, dealing with that in high school just wasn't good. And then I just, I didn't feel like I had a specific place, you know. Um, people would say they were your friends, but then things would occur and then people wouldn't be your friends. So it just, it drove me insane. And then senior year. Two things happened i met a guy um and again he was good for nothing and i knew that from the start but i was getting attention and um it wasn't that i wasn't getting attention from home because my parents did love me but um i've come to realize now that as a kid i wanted my dad to show me love if that made sense but like my dad was there but wasn't there and a lot of people don't tend to understand that there's a difference when your father's not there and you want love and when your father's there and you want love but don't get it. My father was in my life, but he wasn't present in the things that I was doing. Um, it was always my mother. So I, at the time when I was younger, I didn't get, you know, that I was seeking attention from everyone else because of that. It wasn't until maybe a few years ago that I realized it. But, um, you know, so I met this guy and we dated maybe six, seven months or so. Then I got pregnant, um, literally senior year of high school I got pregnant and I was cutting a lot um, of my morning classes because I would meet with, meet up with him in the morning and then we would do what we do in the morning and then I would go to school and be late and um, you know, it terrible situation. I was with this guy literally, not even, I literally was with this guy for a year now that I'm thinking about it because we met early on, probably in September or October we met and then... I got pregnant not far after that, um, literally, maybe two or three months after that. And then we not we didn't break up, but we kind of cut it off. But then we just kept talking to each other um, and kept doing what we did. And then it wasn't until like I graduated that we completely cut it off. But um, I'm going way ahead. Like these stories are going to be all over the place because it's, it's, I'm trying to tell the stories without telling too much because they and coincide with other testimonies. But yeah, I got pregnant, and um, it was the scariest thing ever, like, literally the scariest thing ever. So that kind of, like, broke my soul, literally broke me, because I never wanted to be a statistic, statistic um, and I didn't know what to do. Like, I literally did. I was in it, and what happened was I was on the bus, and I had overheard some girls talking about their periods. And then I was like, wait, I don't remember the last time I had my period, but I was always getting cramps, but nothing like never came. And I didn't correlate it at the time. It just, it didn't correlate in my mind. Um, and it wasn't until I got to school that I broke down and I talked to my um, counselor at school, which I love my counselor so much. I, I loved her two pieces. Um, but I spoke to her and found that I was pregnant. <laughs> um, and then I had to call my mother and I cried my eyes out. Like I was in school office crying because... I was pregnant and I had to deal with that. So I told two of my favorite teachers, which were my math and my English teacher, I loved them to pieces. They were some of my favorite teachers. I had told them about the situation um, and they were very supportive of me, very supportive. Um, I will say the school that I went to, they didn't condone the things that we did, but they were very supportive if you made a mistake, which I am very grateful for the school that I went to because other schools, teachers will ridicule you. Um, you know, students will students will be who students are. Not many, I think maybe two or three people in my school knew because I told them. Um, and even then, they didn't really. I mean, I'm pretty sure they said things behind my back, but they didn't judge me to my face, which was fine. Um, but my teachers were there for me, and I was content on having the kids. Like I really was. But my mother wasn't with it. Um, like at all. My dad was pissed off. Um, like literally pissed off. So, you know, I had was basically forced to get an abortion. Um, and I was already against abortions as a kid because we learned so much about it. And they took us to the body museum one time and um, it kind of turned me off from abortions. I've always hated like I've always hated abortions even prior to getting pregnant. I was 17 at the time. Um, so, you know, I had to deal with that. And that was hard for me because you have you're forcing someone to do something that they're against so not only do i feel bad that i got pregnant 
I feel bad now because, you know, I plan to just keep the kids, but it was twins apparently, um, as well. I had to, I was pregnant with twins. Um, and I was actually about three months long, but I wasn't taking care of myself because I didn't really eat a lot. Um, I'm an emotional eater. Basically, people who are emotional eaters normally eat food when they're emotional. I don't. When I get emotional or upset or angry or, or anything, I don't eat. My appetite just completely goes away. Um, so that took a toll on me, like a major toll. And, you know, there were things that my dad said to me that kind of like broke me even more, like literally broke me to pieces and it like was terrible. Um, and then we found out some things with my dad and him cheating. Then my parents got divorced. <laughs> so it was a lot. It, 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 it was a lot that kind of like went on to me being depressed. Um, and then I got into college. Now, I've been to three colleges. Um, yeah, I said three different colleges. Um, the first college I went to was St. John's University in Queens, New York. And I went because I didn't want to go far away for school, but I didn't want to... Like, I wanted to go far away, but I didn't want to spend a lot of money. So I went there, and their tuition was 57000 back in 2009. I don't know what their tuition is now, but in-state tuition for New York State students was 57000 Anyways... Went to college and literally my entire freshman year was about partying. Like I went to class and stuff and did what I needed to do, but a lot of the times I was out partying or indulging in sexual sin, period. Um, and there were two main people that I participated in sexual sin with, two main guys, um, which I'll talk about that in another video. But um, you know, that was freshman year, and I had to leave because it was just too much for my mother to try and pay by herself because my dad wasn't helping um, her pay, and then we were still dealing with the aftermath of him leaving and coming back and leaving, and it was a lot going on. So um, dealing with that, it was just like my parents are divorced, and I never pictured me being one of those kids with divorced parents because my parents always looked loving to me. But... Even before then, I would be up late at night, hear them arguing about things that my dad did, my mom arguing with him about it, and, um, you know, though I had that stuff in the back of my mind, them actually getting divorced was like, wow, okay. Um, so then, sophomore year, I went to another school, which was William Patterson uh, University in Wayne, New Jersey, and I did a little bit better in that school, but it was the same kind of thing where I was up in the mountains by myself. Um, I did indulge in sexual sin, of course. Did I? No, I did not, actually. I can't recall, actually. That's crazy. If I did, it was with one person that I really did like but didn't want to pursue a relationship with. Um, and there was an incident there that I also was put into a situation where I was raped. Um which I'll talk about that and um, you know I had to leave there again because my mother couldn't pay tuition on her own tuition is a lot of money for a single mom of four kids like that was a lot for my mother um, so then I ended up going to another school the following year and I went to Johnson & Wales University in Rhode Island Providence Rhode Island and um, I had changed my major the first two the first year my freshman year I did pre-law and accounting learned that I hated pre-law so my sophomore year, I did accounting, and I just, I could not pass economics for the life of me. I hated macroeconomics. I hated microeconomics. I hated it. So I switched my major altogether to fashion merchandising, retail marketing, which is basically business, but on the fashion beauty side. And um, I aced that sucker, you guys. I left there with a 3.57 GPA on the dean's list. My life. But um, I went there, and I got a little bit better. Um, you know, my depression wasn't as bad. But I did have my moments where I slipped in and out. But um, I ended up meeting a guy that was a Christian um, and was also a virgin at the time. Well, he's still a virgin, I think, to this day. But, um, you know, he was a Christian, he was a virgin, and we kind of, like, hit it off and started a relationship. And there were times where I was, like, pushing for it to happen. But, um, you know, he stood his ground, and I respected him for that. I fell in love with him like he was a really cool guy I'm not gonna mention his name but um I still chat with him every now and then um oh I got oil down my neck all right yes I was oiling my scalp and didn't realize I have oil rolling down my back <laughs> you guys can see how oily my hands are but yeah so let me go back 
a little bit to high school. Um, there was a situation where I was put in um, because a relative was... How can I say it? I don't want to talk about my brother in a bad way, but uh, my brother used to be in gangs and all that other stuff. Um, you know, and this was around the time that my dad did what he did and kind of literally like broke my family. Like my father broke us when he told us he had another kid and divorced my mother. So my brother took to the streets. I took to just depression basically. But um, I met a guy and, you know, we hung out. When I mean hung out, we had sex. Um, and I didn't think anything of it, honestly. Um, we just, you know, sex to me wasn't a bad thing. It was bad, but in my mind, it was just like, it is what it is. Um, and I know many of us thought that, think that. I mean, I don't care what anyone says. We all know what the Bible says. Sex is bad before marriage. But we all indulge in it. And um, some people don't care. Other people understand, but just don't know how to get out of that. And sex for me was kind of like a drug. It, it was a drug to me. That's just how it was. Um, but yeah, my brother being in a gang and all that kind of put me in a situation in which I didn't realize. And it was literally the grace of God who protected me. Um, I was basically supposed to be gang raped. And that broke me to pieces. Like, I'm saying everything broke me to pieces because literally... Every time something happened, it felt like my spirit was being broken further. And it was terrible to the point where I didn't go to church for a very long time. Like, my pastor, my bishop actually talked about this about two Sundays ago. Um, like, just sharing a little bit of my story because um, as a kid, I was I, I always grew up in church. Um, you know, we grew up in church. We was always active in church. Youth church, choir, dance ministry. You know, when it, we, they did plays, we was in the plays and all that. So, like, I was always active in church. But, you know, when high school came, my senior year, when my dad did what he did, I literally just, like, fell off with church. Um, I went to college. I wasn't coming home to go to church. And if I was coming home, I was leaving on Sunday morning, so I didn't have to go to church. Um, and then when I had to come home for good, after leaving um, Johnson & Wales in Rhode Island, uh, I just didn't go to church for a long time. I just, I don't know. There was a disconnect between me and God. I just, I sulked. I sat in my depression. I cried. I just, I was by myself doing nothing with my life, literally. And um, I didn't go to church. When I say I didn't go to church, you guys, I didn't go to church. I stopped going to church. And if I was in church, you could tell that I had like this aura on me. I just didn't care. I literally had this, I just didn't care life, lifestyle. Um. Cause it was hard trying to get through and i hate therapy um i've tried it before we tried the family therapy i didn't care for it i tried therapy in school and what killed me was when my my um, guidance counselor having me do an emotional pie i don't want to make no pie with my emotions i just i felt like it was stupid it didn't do nothing for me so i haven't been to a therapist since um literally my therapist now is my prayer journal and god um in christ that's you know what it is and, um, you know, it, it's a lot. I don't, like I said, I don't know how to tell this story without intertwining it with the other testimonies because a lot of my depression comes from my parents' divorce and from being raped and from being molested and from having the abortion and stuff like that. Like, there are a lot of things that put me in depression. And I was in there for, for about 24, 23 years. And it wasn't until, I, we had a, I don't know what it was, we had a service on. We had some service at my church, and um, they were talking about depression and bondage and stuff like that. And my first lady stayed with me and pushed me until I got up out of that. Like, she pushed me. And I am grateful for my first lady and my bishop because they're like my second parents, literally. Like, my bishop is my father. That is my dad. Um, and so, though I still have my actual father who helped give birth to me, he hasn't really done much for me compared to my bishop. Like, if I need something, I can call my bishop and know he'll answer the phone for me. I can call him and know he'll be here when I need him. Um, if I call my father, I'm not 100% sure that he would pick up the phone. Because sometimes he doesn't pick up the phone. You know? Um, so I'm very grateful for my bishop and my first lady and the, and the prayers and the push. Because I literally used to get annoyed. Like, I'm... 
I'm one of them people that, like, if you push me too much, you're going to get one or two reactions. I'm going to either shut down and cry or I'm going to spaz out. And, you know, you don't want to spaz out on your bishop and first lady. So I will literally shut down and cry and stay stay further away from church. But I am grateful for the push that they did for me um, because it literally helped me. And it took so long for me to get out of depression because I've been in depression for so long. But um, with their help and their push and their prayers and their love, I got out of that. Um and it's not to say that my mother couldn't do it. My mother could, but you know, when you when it's, when it's someone you know, like your relatives, you're just like, get out my face, you know. But um, it's it's a lot, and I'm not gonna say that I don't slip into depression every now and then because there are times when the enemy, like last night, I literally had to talk myself to sleep in my mind, um, praying against the enemy because he literally finds a way to attack my mind um, with my past situations. At night like at night is the time where he tends to attack me I've noticed and um, because I'm a lot more aware and a lot more spiritually in tune with God now I know when it's the enemy speaking in my mind and not myself um, and I've no, I, I know that I have um, a familiarity with depression depression is kind of like a familiar spirit to me so I find myself sometimes um, you know slipping into it and you're never going to be completely free um, unless you continue to remind yourself that you're free. And I find that sometimes I forget that I'm free from depression. And I will find myself in a depressed state of mind for, for weeks or for days until I'm like, no, this is not it. Like last night, I literally felt myself falling into a depression because the enemy was coming at me with things that happened in my past, things that were going on in my, my relationship, um, things that I try to forget. But, um, you know, when you want to forget things, the enemy finds a way to pop them up in your mind. So I literally had to pray to myself in my mind and say that the enemy will no longer have um, control over my mind. He will no longer be able to use my past to hurt me because I'm loved by God. God loves me despite my mistakes. And, um, you know, I've made plenty of mistakes. You guys will see when I talk about sexual sin. I've made plenty of mistakes in my life. But, um, you know... God has God can use your mistakes to get you through and to help someone else. Um, and I know that with my depression, I again I wasn't clinically depressed, but I knew that I was clinically depressed. If that I don't know what the right terminology is, but I never went to the doctor to you know for them to tell me I was depressed. And when I I remember I told my mother one time I was depressed, and she was like, "No, you're not." Um, and you know sometimes it's kind of like black people. African American people, minorities, um, don't want to admit that they have depression. And there's nothing wrong with admitting that you have depression. It's better that you admit it and know than not know and pretend like you don't have it and then spiral out of control. Because depression is no joke. I literally have tried to kill myself plenty of times. But the knife never cut. Literally. And that was only by the grace of God that that didn't happen. And I'm going to talk about my suicide testimony. Because I've literally, literally tried to kill myself plenty of times. Like, it, it it got to the point where things were too hard for me, and I tried to kill myself. Literally. Um, I'm not like that anymore, obviously. Um, I, I try to keep my mind as strong as possible, and I try to keep myself fed with the Word of God. Um, I try to stay in tune with God. I try to keep myself in His Word. And I'm trying to perfect my prayer life, um, because I can say my prayer life isn't the best, you know. I haven't been prayer journaling in forever. I finally did last night. Um, and as I'm recording this, because I'm saying last night, as I'm recording this, it's December 4th. You're not going to see these videos until January, though. So, um, you know, there, there's a lot. Um, depression is no joke. Um, it leaves you broken. It leaves you weak. It leaves you susceptible to sin. Um, and I think that also played a major role in me partaking in the sins that I took in. Um, because I was depressed, I was always trying to find an outlet without realizing I was trying to find an outlet. And I always, for some reason, went to sex, weed, and um, alcohol. That's what it was. Um, I can't even say alcohol because I didn't really drink like that in high school, um, in, in college or high school. So just sex and weed were like the two things that I really gravitated towards um, when I felt depressed. And, you know, again, at that time, I didn't know. Now that when I look back at my life now and I'm... Um, I'm reading the word of God and I'm praying to God and he's revealing more to me. I can now see clearer what was going on with my life. 
And um, a lot of it was the enemy trying to destroy me. He definitely thought he destroyed me. Um, because I know there's a calling on my life. Like, I know. And at the time, I didn't care. Like, it was even to the point where I stopped dancing. And I'm a dancer at heart. I've always been a dancer. Dance is my passion. That's my love. Sorry if you guys see the glare. Um, so when I started doing liturgical dance in church, I fell in love with it. And I was always dancing. Like, you you would never not see me not dancing, spinning, twirling, doing plies. Just, you wouldn't see it. Like, I love dancing. And, um... You know, there was a time when, like, when I stopped going to church, I stopped dancing. And dancing is my release. Um, it's where I can truly worship God and just let it all out on the floor. Literally let it out on the floor through the moves that I do. Um, I love the art of dance. I love it and how um, it really connects me to God. And I noticed the more recently that I've been dancing, the less depressed I've been. Um, and again, just because I say I'm free from depression doesn't mean I don't slip into it. I find myself slipping every now and then. It's the truth. And I notice that when I do, I need to just take away all the distractions, get in the Bible, read a Christian book. Um, even if it's Christian fiction, pick up the book. And it helps me so much. I mean, I, 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 don't, I, I don't know what else to say. Like... My story of depression is, is, is a lot. Um, there's probably even more stuff that I'm forgetting right now because the Lord just doesn't want me to remember um, or to share at this point in time. But yeah, depression is one that I still struggle with. It was the hardest one of all. Um, yeah, definitely depression and then sexual sin for me. Those those two are like the top notch for me in my life. But um, yeah, some people always ask me how I got out of it. Um, the prayers of my first lady and my bishop, um, the prayers of my mother, and it literally got to a point last year, I think it was, yeah, last year, it got to a point last year where I was just like, I'm fed up with this, like, I got to a point where I was fed up, being sad, crying, not wanting to go places, like, it affected my relationship with my fiance, and I praise God for him because he <laughs> has not left me. And there has been points and points in our relationship. We've been together six years now. We've been engaged for five. We have a four-year-old son together. So, you know, there have been points in our relationship where we wanted to call it quits. And I'm sure he's felt like he wanted to call it quits plenty more than I did. But, um, yeah, there, he has been with me, not at the hardest parts, but when it got a little bit more tough um he stuck with me throughout it though i drained him probably and i apologize if you're watching this babe um depression can drain you it can drain the people around you it affects the people around you um like it it's it's not a good thing like um and i'm the type of person i wear my emotions on the outside i wear them on my sleeve so if i'm upset you know if i'm sad you know if there's something wrong you know and it's not something that i can control it just it happens so um being depressed and being in a relationship is tough being depressed and being pregnant and my pregnancy was another thing that made me more depressed because i was already upset because i didn't want to be pregnant like yeah um as i was saying before the camera cut off um yeah being depressed and pregnant just wasn't a good mix so i love my fiance for sticking it out with me um, but even with him trying to push me to better myself and get out of my depression, it didn't help. Um, there has to come a point in your life when you're sick of being depressed and you seek the Lord for yourself to get out of the depression. And that's what happened with me. Um, I got fed up because it was affecting my relationship. It was affecting me as a mother. It was affecting me as a daughter, as a sister, as a friend. It was affecting my mind. It was affecting my body to the point where I wasn't eating. I was losing weight again. And um, I got tired of it. So I told myself that I was going to read the word. And um, not just read the word, but study the word. And in doing that, um, and staying grounded in the word of God, I was able to break that depression from myself. Um, and there's a diff like people can do it for you. My first lady could pray for me. My bishop could pray for me. My mother can pray for me. My fiance can give me all the encouragement that he wants to, but it doesn't do anything until I'm at that point of wanting to do it for myself. And I think that's what it was before. It was just like, yeah, okay, whatever. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. I'll get out of it. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm good. But now 
it got to the point where I'm just like, I'm tired of it. I need to get better for myself so that I am better for everyone else. Because I didn't want to leave my relationship. I didn't want to continue being a terrible sister. I didn't want to be a terrible mother. I wanted to be better for myself. I wanted to be the woman that God created me to become. And in order for me to do that, I had to get out of depression. And in order to do that, I needed to seek the source. And the source is God. And I can do that through his word. So, um... You know, if you're dealing with depression, I'm not going to give you the cliches of go see a therapist and it'll be okay. No, it's not going to be okay. It's hard. Um, it, it's, it's hard, especially if you've been struggling, it, struggling with it for years. But if you are truly ready to get out of it, then you must feel like you're feel fed up. Be fed up, you know, and grab your Bible. It don't matter where, what you read the Bible. For me, I study the Gospel of John and that just the gospel of john helped me so much which is why i'm so fond of the gospel of john because it was the first book that i studied and it was the first book that really pulled me out of my depression um and it made me closer to god in christ so study john read books um you know pray a journal journal and when i say journal even if you have to scribble on your pages if there if there are some parts in my journals where i look at now and literally i will have the date and it's just literally like i took the pen and was pissed off and scribbled on it or i ripped up pages because that's how i felt that's how i got my emotions out get your emotions out keeping them locked in does not help you're not going to want to talk to people because i know i didn't i didn't want to i don't want to talk to you about emotions so I was the type of person that wanted to write my emotions out and then I started learning about prayer journaling. And um, I would say that my journals previously when I was pregnant, my my, my journal was depressed. It, it, you could feel the depression on the pages. But um, then I got into prayer journaling and my prayers weren't depressed. They were a little bit different. Like you could feel me calling out, begging, pleading and telling God that I wanted a change and that change began to happen when I began to take in the word more so definitely take in the word of God more you know it it's it's serious take it in because it helps um yeah that take read the word of God study the word of God um pray prayer journal if you need to you know and be in nature nature works I don't like to be around people so like I'm just I don't like people <laughs> like it's not that I don't like people I just don't like being in crowds and groups so I find that if I'm around nature or if I'm just listening to nature sounds I have my ambi ambiance playlist down below listen to that it helps but um I'm gonna stop rambling because my camera about to cut off again because this video is so long so like I said I don't know how long these videos are gonna be but I'm gonna try to keep all these videos under 40 minutes so yeah this is part of my part of my testimony as far as depression goes um, and I'll talk more about depression in the other testimonies just because it intertwines with the other testimonies. But I wanted to just do this main overview video on me with depression. Um, I'm 27 years. I got a depression at like 24, 23. And um, I still struggle with it every now and then. But, you know, it's okay to struggle. I'm not perfect. I'm going to struggle. And within that struggle, I need to continue to stay focused on God. I need to continue to draw closer to him and draw nearer to him. So again, if you're dealing with depression, keep in the word. It, it gets to the point where sometimes you don't want to read your word, but um, don't let that deter you from diving in regardless. Read your word, pray. If you don't like to speak your prayers out, write them out. They work, they help, and um, they build your, 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 your confidence in yourself and with the God. So that's all I have to say about this first video um i hope you guys enjoy this i hopefully it helped you guys if you have any questions whatsoever if you want to know any more about me with depression leave your comments or questions down below i have no problem talking about it with you guys like i said i want to be open and transparent with you all so i hope that you enjoyed this video and i'll see you guys in the next one